Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Life According to Paolo, where I get to interview trailblazers from around the world, but in this case, it's Game Blazers. I'm really excited about this interview and it's with an amazing man called Ivan Folletti. He's absolutely amazing and I'm really, really excited about this. Over to you, Mr. Folletti, to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the audience who you are. All right. Hi, guys. That's, that's a fantastic introduction, Paolo. Fantastic introduction. Um, uh, right. So, hi, I'm Ivan Filetti. I'm the Chief Operations Officer for Gaming Malta. So, Gaming Malta is a non-profit foundation set up to promote Malta as a gaming jurisdiction, right? And we're actively working on video gaming and esports uh, from all the different uh, facets of, of attracting more studios to the island and growing the ecosystem on the island also uh, and also primarily on the education front you know we're getting more people trained in in, uh, in the video game sector and in, in the esports sector because i think that's that's extremely vital so we're maltese we're malta we're in the middle of the mediterranean uh lovely sunshine um, you know that helps also the lifestyle here uh, keeps us smiling somehow and uh, and yeah it's uh, you know fantastic to be on your show paulo Thank you so much for being here. So, you know, in your introduction, not only about yourself, but also about Gaming Malta, you mentioned education. And, you know, I just wanna, um, I'd just like to ask if you can expand on that a bit, because I'd just like, you, I'd just like to ask you, um, how important is education within the gaming sector? Okay, it's, I, I would say it's vital. <coughs> It's vital for the very simple reason that that designing a video game is highly skilled. You need to know your maths, you need to know your physics, and you need to know your your coding, your engineering, etc. So, why a lot of young people think, okay, it's you know we're designing video games, it's fun, and it's all this. Yes, it's fun, but you need to be prepared for it, and you need to study, and it's highly skilled. And one of probably one of the most difficult things to do is to find enough talent to enter, you know, to enter the industry. And that's exactly what we're working strategically is in Malta, whereby, you know, there's a very strong ecosystem uh, where the, the University of Malta actually has uh, uh, a faculty called the Institute of Digital Games, uh, Paolo, which is, which is hang, which is, uh, uh, ranked extremely highly on the Princeton review list, so, so it's masters and researchers and video gamers. But also there are other, you know, vocational um, institutions, also academic institutions providing gaming study, you know, for people maybe who wouldn't feel that, you know, they needed to go to university, but, it, you know, it provides them uh, a way, a channel for them, you know, to learn um, other subjects, vocational subjects, and video gaming is one of them. Okay. Also, it's important so that because you also learn how to interact with a game, and of how to find the balance. You know, the the video game life and life basically in balance. You know, and basically also learning how um, how to manage your time when it comes to video gaming and these sports also. Definitely, definitely, that is a definitely key point in what you just said. <laughs> Um, because, you know, when you spend so much time on a video game, in video game life, you kind of, you know, you drift away and you forget about real life. But like, what, what would you suggest to anybody that is watching this and they want to literally play two day, 24 hours going on and on and on? What would your advice be to them? Would it be to trim that down? Or maybe to go even further? <laughs> I'm just joking. But um, like, what would your advice be to them? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say definitely, you know, trim it down. Uh, um, you know, it's it's all a balance. It's all a balance. I think physical exercise is important. Going out for a walk in the park is important. Uh, I come from a different world, also. So I was in the music world uh, myself, and I remember when I was your age, uh, I had to spend most of my time, you know, um, trying to learn a musical instrument. So you know, playing guitar, etc. And what you find is that over a certain period of time, you don't become efficient anymore. You don't learn much anymore. Uh, so, so you need your own time and space and you need, you know, to balance. 
It's good that you read books. It's good that you interact with other people and with other friends, you know, um, because this, once you come back to it, then you enjoy playing the game even more. Okay, and you also you also become better at it and you know highly skilled at it. Today we also teach that that you know when it comes to esports, I mean most of the top esports athletes they've got their 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 physical trainers, they've got a nutritionist, they've got the psychologist, etc. Like any proper athlete, okay. And if you're not physically fit and mentally fit also, then it's also difficult to progress in your game. Definitely. You know, that the top key thing I think you just mentioned is being mentally fit uh, because that is definitely a big one because um, that comes into, you know, fitness. It comes into many aspects, but especially gaming as well, because, you know, some people have the fit mindset of, you know, I can get, I can eliminate so much players in a game, but in life that they, they, they could, let's say, struggle with math or something like that. Um, so that definitely is being mentally fit. Um, yeah, that is an amazing point. Yeah, and you know, so so I always preach this, you know, about balance because it's uh, it's super important. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, that's it. So education, and also then education as a talent pipeline. Okay, in basically, um, you know, in creating the future talent for uh, for the video gaming sector because the video um, you know gaming sector has a number of jobs available um, i believe in the uk you've got a program called actually kickstart right which is which is run by by yuki and and basically it is you know to get people into the industry with internships apprenticeships etc which is which is you know a fantastic initiative also we're we're developing um something that in Malta also so so we get internships for young people to join uh, a video game studio and you know learn on the job also and experience also uh working you know with other people you know and 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 uh, although with COVID, it's, it's, it's proving also challenging at this time. Uh, but it's interesting because I think, um, if nothing else, COVID has also taught us, you know, the importance of video gaming. You know, the usage of, of, of you know, video gaming has actually spiked, uh, um, um, uh, you know, over the recent months. It definitely has spiked. And, you know, let's look at, you know, the gaming industry um, and, you know, like the diversity within there. Um, and, you know, let's talk about, you know, women, getting women in gaming. Um, like before we had a lot of um, uh, male gamers, uh, there were so many of them, but there is a lot of female gamers now. Um, uh, how important is that within the gaming industry? It's you touch on a point here which I feel very strongly about. So equality and diversity in the workplace, especially, is is vital. Okay, and it's something which us as gaming motor we we uh, we sincerely encourage, and we're an ambassador for that also. Um, and you know we really need to get um, um, you know females that just are working working you know within the industry and also becoming top pre sports athletes. You know, top pre sports players and athletes, and mind you, I call them athletes uh, because because it's you know the same skills um, effectively are required also. So yes, that's 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 a very important note. I mean, my daughter, I've got a nine year old daughter, Nina, and she, and, and she plays video games, and and uh, uh, you know she's currently into Roblox and all this. Um, uh, so, and it's interesting to see. Um, how she interacts with her friends also, you know, in getting her friends together to play online and, and you know, uh, to doing all that. So, so, yes, there definitely shouldn't be any, bar any barriers for women to, to, to lead in the gaming industry. That is so, so true. Diversity is key. And, you know, like people say, um, you know, sometimes we are not equal, but the gaming industry has to be equal. So um, it definitely yeah. does. Um, but it's just amazing the rise of females 
within the gaming industry. Um, so let's um, talk a bit about your journey from, you know, uh, you know, back when you was a little boy, you said when you was my age, you liked to play the guitar and stuff like that. Um, you went from playing the guitar to going into the gaming industry. Uh, what, what really switched your mind? What really switched your tracks to think about going into the gaming industry? Well, it took me some time to get there. So, so, so I was a marketing manager for a brewery Best job in the world, obviously. Uh, um, I was CEO of, of, of an advertising agency. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, once government created this, this gaming Malta foundation, uh, I was asked to lead it uh, from day one, basically. And, and I think it brought, you know, the marketing skills for me to a real mission. One, a real mission with a, with a real purpose, basically, I love my country. I love Malta, and and I am in the envious position where 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 I spearhead efforts, um, you know, to ensure that Malta is is you know top of its game uh, within the gaming industry. We we consider ourselves our north star is promoting Malta's home of gaming excellence. We're not a center. We're not a hub. We're a home. Why? Because you know people feel safe at home. People have friends at home. And that's exactly what we are. You know, we want people to feel comfortable here and, and you know, have success uh, from the island. So that's why we're home of gaming excellence. And um, um, uh, we do that, and I do that together with my team, with Mission Brazil, you know, and, and it's a great purpose. We love it. Definitely. And you talked about why, um, you know, why gaming Malta is so amazing. But out of all of the other gaming companies in the whole world, and there might even be some in Malta, why did you choose gaming Malta? Okay. So, yeah. So, so, so basically, gaming Malta is not a, we don't produce video games, right? We don't produce video games. What we do, we are was a, a non-profit foundation set up by government to promote both as a gaming jurisdiction. So companies come to us, uh, companies from the UK, companies from Turkey, companies from Tunisia, companies from all over the world, really, who are looking at both as a jurisdiction. So basically, in serving their, uh, they're basing their operations here, okay. And uh, and they come and speak to us because because we can assist them. Okay, we can put them in touch with the right people. We are, uh, we spearhead all video gaming efforts with government, etc. And so we're their first kind of port of call uh, for when they need, or rather when th they are thinking of putting, you know, Malta on the radar. That will be an absolutely amazing um, radar with, you know, gaming Malta. So, you know, with our other, um, let's say there might be other gaming companies that represent their own country, um, but there might be countries that don't have a gaming company that uh, represent their country. Um, you know how you said that, you know, gaming Malta is basically the home of gaming in Malta. So how important is it for other countries to implement this into their system as well? <laughs> Um, it's important because, you know, kind of channeling this interest and having one organization which is overlooking the whole strategic efforts uh, in a country, uh, you know, to, to grow the gaming ecosystem is important, it's vital, you know, uh, it's the power of one, basically, rather than having, you know, different other uh, entities etc so so it's all focus it's all it's all focus it's like when you're playing a video game you know you focus on 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 your goal and on your target and you know having an entity like that doing that really helps it definitely does help um so let's go back to your journey um so how long did it take from where you was before to where you are today okay who it took a number of years, Paolo. Yeah, um, probably how um, long it took, but also what did it take? Like stuff, like what did it take? What personalities did it take? I think, look, I think the main personality is that you never stop learning. Okay, so continuously educating yourself and being very humble and being a very good listener, I would say. Uh, because the way, 
the way things are going uh, today, everything changes. So, so you know, the famous cliche, you know, the only constant is change. So you really have to continuously adapt to change. And, uh, you know, and that's important. And I think the maker system is big adapting to change, learning, and, uh, you know, not because you finish university, you know it all. Today, that's, that's, that's all gone. That's, you know, thrown out of the window, really. And, uh, and you really have to continue upskilling. And, because obviously technology moves also very fast. So we all, you know, need to continuously learn. So you know, basically having an open mind uh, and being, you know, continuously open to reading, learning, talking to people, mentors. Uh, I had, uh, I'm very lucky to had in my in my life uh, very good mentors also, and you know, hard work. <laughs> Definitely, that is really, really key. Uh, one thing that you've really mentioned that was like a oh, moment was mentors. So, you know, within uh, everyone's life, how important is a mentor? And would you say you can have more than one? Definitely, you can have you can have more than one, you know, especially, you know, of, of what we're trying to do. Uh, to be a mentor is important because you can be open, you can be honest, and, and you know, and you need in your life, you need people who ultimately will guide you at some point, the kind of being a lighthouse for you, you know. And uh, I think it's also it's a question of respect, you know, uh, being, you know, respect towards people who are maybe more experienced than you are. Uh, maybe not older than you are, because they, they could be younger, and I mean, you know, I'm you know, I work with people who are much younger than me and maybe have more experience in the gaming sector. So, so, so a mentor could be of any age, really, but, but you know, someone you look, you look up to and who will teach you, know, the, you know, the right values, the right values of integrity, the right the values of trust on, on you, know, uh, uh, you know, respecting your peers and also guiding you uh, towards, you know, your career, basically. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and I love when you say guiding you towards your career, um, because, you know, there are literally people out there who are clueless. They just think, mentor, mentor, mentor. He said he's a mentor, so he can be my mentor, but I want to go into football, but he he's a mentor for tennis players, right? So uh, I definitely do agree with that. So pick the right mentor that can, you know, help you with your industry, not just any mentor off the street that says they're a mentor. Um, it has to, you know, someone that you connect with. It could, you know, your mentor could easily be your parents, your mother or father. You know, they were your first mentors um, when they brought you up. And, and, you know, there are many mentors throughout your life who you don't even know who are your mentors. Maybe it's the man that tied, helped you, you know, learn how to tie your shoes or, or the man that um, knitted your clothes because they got ripped. So, you know, there are lots of mentors in the world, but, you know, don't just go picking like you, 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 you. But that is very, very key. That's it. Mentor for the industry that you want to go. That's it. Into. Um, so I'm an absolute... So true. <laughs> Definitely. I absolutely get. Uh, I I love gaming. Um, uh, and I think um, before this interview, uh, when me, I, um, Yvonne, and my mum got to speak all together, um, one thing that did come up um, was that I used to play a lot of video games. Um, and uh, I, but now I've reduced my screen time and stuff like that. And like you said, having a balance. Um, and, you know, I'm a game lover still, I'm still a game lover, and there are other many game lovers out there. Um, how can they get involved with what Gaming Malta is doing, and why should they get involved with what Gaming Malta is doing? Okay. Um... Okay, basically, it's, it's, look, we all love gaming. All right, and and if you're so if you're in the process of you're a startup and you know you're looking for a base of operations, then obviously you know please speak to us. Uh, maybe we can help there. You know, you know, there's nothing better than you know designing a game. Uh, 
you know, in a Mediterranean country with the sun and the sea. And, and you know, you could, you could work long hours, but you could have be having a barbecue with your friends also at some point during the day. Um, you know, that's always, you know, um, very appealing. When it comes to, to, to the games, etc. So this is once I said, this is our educational programs, which we want to intensify our efforts in, in you know, helping, uh, helping gamers, you know, find their balance also when it comes to that. But what's interesting, Paolo is, once we're talking about it, is um, games couldn't, you know, games aren't just for entertainment, okay? So today there is a serious games initiatives, okay? So games which are used for medical health, games which are used for education, okay? Uh, which are a vital part of, of, um, of the educational journey today. So we should be looking at games, not just from an entertainment perspective, but also from a social impact uh, perspective, okay? So today, as we say, there are games which, which, which promote uh, you know, social impact and which help people to realize and get more aware, awareness of, uh, of, you know, social impact issues. Okay. And that's all part of our mission also. Definitely. That is absolutely amazing. Um, it's great that you did come about that because, you know, those types of games are on the rise. Um, my sister, Yasmin, she aspires to be a doctor. My God, I say she's a gamer for doctors, but you know, she absolutely loves um, doing all this doctor stuff. I can't handle the blood, but when she does it, she just covers the phone. Um, but she, she, she absolutely loves um, all, all of that stuff. Um, but really those simulations, um, those games are really needed um, within our world. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, being an ambulance, being a police officer, you know, where you get to pick your role in the world and how that, um, how that can play out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, th you know, this interview is absolutely uh, amazing. Um, so let's look at your okay. audience. Um, uh, for Gaming Malta and uh, why do your followers or people that absolutely love what you're doing, why do they love what Gaming Malta is doing and what attracts them to um, you guys? But first of all, what attracts them I think is Malta, first of all, because we're a lovely country uh, surrounded with great sea, and, and as I said, the lifestyle, the, you know, the, you know, the lifestyle is good. Uh, people enjoy being here. People enjoy working here. Um, and, you know, it's your typical, you know, Mediterranean lifestyle where, you know, uh, pre-COVID times, you know, you could be out of the house till midnight. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, and, and it was this way it is. Um, but 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 uh, they like it because because we can provide help and assistance to to companies who are who are looking at relocating to Malta and setting up their video game studio here. We're actually building um, a seven hundred square meter incubator space, all right, with an accelerator program tied up to it, where young startups, you know, can be um, you know heavily also subsidized um, on rents, etc where they can have an area where they can meet up and be mentored about, about, about you know, their business, about their video game and eSports business, where they can have their own co-working offices or studios rather, you know, and, and, and we're hoping, you know, to, and that's, that is planned to be built by and completed by September, October this year. So it was exciting times ahead. So there's a, a lot of things happening. Sounds absolutely amazing. And I think you've already answered my next question, which was just to share any upcoming projects. Obviously not in detail because they are a surprise. But um, yeah, I think you've already shared that. Um, but I've absolutely had a wonderful time. Uh, but just before we go, um, just to any gamers out there or just anybody who absolutely loves games or would like to get into gaming, what would your advice um, be to them? But, you know, some of them don't know where to start. So what would your advice be to them to where, uh, of where to start within the gaming industry? My advice would be find your passion. Find something which you enjoy doing within the 
industry, not thinking about money. Okay, this should, this should become secondary. You know, make your hobby work for you. I would say, and continue. You know, your education because it's lifelong. It is lifelong, and it's going to live with you. Your education is like a tattoo is with you for the rest of your life. Um, but you know, tattoos can go really bad, and that's that's the same for your education. And so you got to maintain that excellent education. Um, education. I absolutely love that. Um, of let your hobby, let your passion work for you. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Whether you're on audio, you're watching via video, wherever you are around the world. I know this is going on my podcast and over at, um, not my podcast. So if you're if you're on LinkedIn and you see this video, or maybe YouTube or something like that, make sure to like comment down below and comment gamers if you absolutely love this um, interview. If you're on LinkedIn, I'll um, tag you in the post, Ivan, and everyone just, you know, hit up Ivan, go and follow, 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 follow. Uh, also, not only Ivan, but also what Gaming Malta is doing. They're absolutely amazing. I've learned so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Folletti. And thank you, Paula. You can you can call me Yvonne. Thank you. <laughs>